Greens, Molly scott -Scato. Thank you very much, Chair. I know that my fellow committee members here appreciate that this is a crucial time for my country as we make this important decision about whether to remain part of this union, and I hope you'll excuse me while I have some time with the British Commissioner focusing specifically on some British questions. I'll move straight on to my questions to allow the Commissioner plenty of time for his answers. So first, could we discuss progress on preventing corporate tax avoidance and specifically public country-by-country -country reporting? I'm interested to know why the UK government are now supporting this, if you have any insights there, and your view on whether a Brexit might increase tax avoidance, given the role played by the British overseas territories. Secondly, the UK government has fought hard to ensure that capital markets rules do not harm the City of London's dominance in the EU. Other member states may have a different conception of how capital markets should look, and should the UK find itself outside the single market, they might feel less inclined to accommodate it. Given that, as Commissioner in charge of the capital market rules in general, you must, of course, have assessed the impact on your portfolio of the very real risk of a Brexit, could you share your conclusions with us, please? And finally, you are a senior example of what the tabloid press would call a faceless bureaucrat. Of course, your presence in the committee today proves that not only do you have a face, but also that you are accountable to me as a British MEP. You have to be light-hearted at times like this. So if you could find time in your answer, I would appreciate it if you could explain whether you feel you have ultimate power over the lives of the British people. Thank you. Right. Well, uh, where shall I start? Let me start with, I think, what's at the core of the question, really, which is um, for uh, Britain's financial services, what would life look like um, outside uh, the single market? And uh, as, I, as I was saying earlier to Mr. Herkmark, um, I think when you run through all the possible variants of models that have been suggested in recent weeks in the United Kingdom from the Norwegian model to the Swiss model to the WTO model to the Albanian model um, to and now the let's just leave the single market altogether model. Um, none of those, in my view, uh, as the person that's responsible for um, partly you know, drawing up the rules for, the, for access to that market, uh, none of them are better than the current arrangement. Uh, indeed, they're all worse than the current arrangement, and I gently remind uh, people that the current arrangement, as you've said, in terms of the performance of the British financial services sector, which has doubled the, its surplus uh, over the last 10 years, uh, and has just been voted yet again, London, the most competitive financial centre in the world, rather gives lie to the idea that the financial services in sector in the UK have somehow been held back by membership of the EU. Uh, and I think it's also the case that when you talk both to British businesses and to European businesses based in the UK and to businesses from all around the globe who come in to the single market through the UK, that they see Britain's membership of the single market being an attractive part of the overall offer that London and the rest of the UK's financial service sector makes. And I, I've never argued that the success of the sector is down just to the single market, uh, but many businesses, I think three quarters of businesses, say one of the reasons that they want to invest in the UK, in London, is because of access to that single market. So from that point of view, I think the economic argument is, um, is very clear. In terms of um, how, uh, how, how does the system work, to whom do I feel accountable, I think there is a basic misunderstanding or, or lack of awareness uh, as to the role that the Commission plays, the role that the European Parliament plays, and the role that the European Council play uh, back in the UK. And the idea that I um, am able to wake up one morning and decide I want to legislate um, in a particular way 
uh, is clearly not how the system works. Uh, and the fact that no legislation can be passed without uh, um, the, um, the uh, agreement involvement shaping of it by the Council and therefore elected uh, ministers from each member state plus the European Parliament elected, uh, you know, that is indeed how it, um, how it works. On CBCR, uh, just briefly, um, I, I, I don't think there is a, I don't see it as being a particular uh, Brexit dimension to that, but I think the fact that uh, we're taking forward a proposal across the whole of Europe to try to make, uh, to increase tax transparency, uh, to make it, uh, to, to, to increase the incentives for companies to pay tax uh, where they're earning their profit, and to try to redress what I see as an imbalance between smaller businesses, which in some countries are paying 30% higher effective tax rate than bigger companies, uh, I think is something that um, a lot of people in the UK will uh, support.